have to believe in it in order to understand it. I don't believe in it, but I understand it. Allah and Muhammad apparently did not understand it. They didn't even get the three names right. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the first ever video of Turkestan. This channel will be dedicated to countering anti-Islamic polemics. And right now, we're introducing a new series called Refuting Apostate Prophet. In this series, we're going to be debunking claims of this pretty well-known person called Apostate Prophet. This specific video will be refuting Apostate Prophet's YouTube video called Allah Makes Another Mistake, The Trinity. Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. Last week I talked about how the Quran contains a very obvious mistake in identifying the beliefs of Jews. Today I want to go on with that and talk about another sign of ignorance found in the Quran. This time it concerns the beliefs of Christians. If you read the Quran, the author was clearly not an expert in theology, even though the author is supposed to be almighty, all-knowing, perfect Allah, who also claims to be the same God of the Bible. At the beginning of the video, the Apostate Prophet, whom we will call AP for short throughout this video, says that the Quran claims that Allah is the God of the Bible. While this is indeed correct, it is not the entire truth. The traditional Muslim account about the Gospel, also called Injil and Torah, is that God either directly dictated or ordered angels to recite them onto Jesus and Moses respectively. There was no physical book that descended from the heaven and was given to the messenger. Once the oral revelation has been given to the respective prophet, it would be recited to the followers and community of believers and would continue in the oral tradition until someone would record down what the community is circulating verbally. In this sense, the Injil and Torah are primarily oral revelation before they were written down in books later by Jews and Christians. Muslim scholarship holds that the Injil and Torah could have been corrupted either through the distortion and embellished of the oral tradition before written documents were set down, or through what Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 8 says, the lying pen of the scribes that has handled it falsely, or in other words, scribal changes to the biblical texts that have accumulated over the centuries. So in this sense, Allah is the God of the revelations bestowed upon Jews and Christians, but in no sense of the word is he the same God of what we today call Old and New Testament in the modern Bible. The topic that Allah got wrong this time is the Christian doctrine of the Trinity, which is not even a hard thing to grasp. Also, at the beginning of the video, AP claims that the Trinity is not a hard topic to grasp, yet common sense and Christian tradition say otherwise. The Trinity holds that there is one God who is simultaneously three divine persons. Keeping aside the fact that natural theology refutes such a doctrine, common sense also appears to be a threat to this common Christian belief. How could a Christian say that there are three distinct entities, each of which is 100% God, yet out of the other side of his mouth maintain that there is one God? It should come as no surprise then that Christian theologians like Thomas Aquinas, Peter Lombard and St. Patrick all declared that the Trinity is outside of human comprehension, which was the central message of Augustine's book called De Trinitate. So despite his appeal to Christianity, Christian theology refutes AP's claim. The vast majority of Christians believe in the Trinity, and the vast majority of Christians believed so when Muhammad was around. There are also some Christians that don't follow the doctrine of the Trinity, but even among them, the, the concept of God is basically the same. Not even one minute in, and AP is on his third mistake. He claims that among the Prophet, the Arab Christians were either followers of the Trinity or their concept of God was basically the same. However, this is most certainly not the case. For even before and up until the advent of Islam, Arabian Christianity was very diverse. Among the Christians at the time of the Prophet were Sabellians, originating from Sabellius in Libya, who believed that God was one rather than the three persons and that this one person jumps back and forth between different modes. Another ones were the Arians, originating with the Alexandrian bishop called Arius, who affirmed that the Father was the only divine person and that what Trinitarians called the Son was a created being who is not divine. 
These concepts were all, of course, declared heresy by the Catholic Church, but they are still followed by some Christians to this day. For further refutation of AP's claims, see a book called Lost Christianities and another book called Lost Scriptures, both of which are by Bart Urban, a leading New Testament scholar and professor of religious studies at North Carolina University. I have to believe in it in order to understand it. I don't believe in it, but I understand it. Allah and Muhammad apparently did not understand it. They didn't even get the three names right. Let's see what the Quran says. And beware the day when Allah will say, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you say to the people, take me and my mother as deities beside Allah? Chapter 5, verse 116. Perhaps the central point of AP's entire video is this Quranic verse. And when Allah will say, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you say to the people, take me and my mother as deities beside Allah? Surah Al-Maidah, Ayah 116. There are a number of problems with AP's interpretation of the verse, but we will limit them to only three. Number one, the verse is not a reference to the Trinity. One problem with AP's interpretation of the verse is that the verse itself makes no explicit reference to the Trinity. Therefore, if the verse is describing the Trinity as AP claims, it will quite literally become a case of reading into what the verse does not say. It's not even claiming to describe Christian beliefs, but rather is a prophecy about a story of the last days. The prophecy in the verse is that Allah will ask Isa السلام, or Jesus on the day of resurrection if he asked his followers to associate Mary and himself as partners with Allah, to which Jesus will reply in the negative. Notice that the story has nothing to do with the Trinity or is even an attempt to explain the doctrine. Rather, it is a conversation where Allah questions Jesus about the message that was given to his followers, not necessarily about what his followers actually believe. Number two, the other problem is that some Christians absolutely did worship Jesus. Choleridianism was a label given to a group of Christian sects that not only glorified Mary, but believed that Mary was God on par with the persons of the Trinity. The Palestinian historian Epiphanius of Salamis records all the Christian sects and practices and rituals of the followers of Choleridianism in his book Panarion. As a matter of fact, Avril Cameron wrote a long book called The Cult of the Virgin in the Late Antiquity, Religious Development and Myth-Making, in which the topic Choleridianism is explored at length. Given that we have primary historical sources and entire academic resources on this topic, this refutes AP's later claim that there is no evidence at all that any Christians ever worshipped Mary or saw her as a part of the Trinity and that we have no evidence for the Caliridians. Number 3. The final problem with AP's claim is that it is not clear that Christians do not worship Mary. While Catholics certainly emphasize the point that they do not worship Mary, it is clear from their practices and sacraments and general lifestyle that some sort of deification of Mary is present. Take the story of Pope John Paul II's attempted assassination. When Pope John Paul II was shot while the ambulance was rushing him to the hospital, the Pope was not praying to God or calling on the name of Jesus. He kept on saying over and over, Mary my mother, Polish pilgrims placed a picture of Lady Shostakova on the throne where the Pope normally sat. People gathered around the picture, the Vatican loudspeakers broadcasted the prayers of the Rosary. When the Pope recovered, he gave Mary all the glory for saving his life, and he made a pilgrimage to Fatima to publicly thank her. This can be seen in the Catholic undertow by Marianne Collins on page 102. Not only do Catholics have entire prayers dictated to Mary, such as the Hail Mary prayer, Catholics usually choose this prayer to recite at least 50 times during a form of prayer called the Rosary. While Catholics confess with their lips that they do not worship Mary, their beliefs, sacraments and practices testify that they deify Mary to some extent beyond their treatment of respect. This refutes AP's latter rebuttal to the objection that the verse is about veneration to the degree of worship. Moreover, Christians, especially and especially Catholics, to hold down on intercessory.
Islamic scholars such as As-Sudi or Ibn Kathir also make it clear in their exegesis that the Quran refers in these verses to the Christian belief in the father, the mother, and the son. In the middle of the video, at the 357 mark, AP misquotes Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Matter of fact, the tafsir does not insult Christians or call them ignorant. The actual text that Ibn Kathir wrote is Allah will speak to his servant and messenger Isa the son of Maryam, peace be upon him, saying to him on the day of resurrection in the presence of those who worshipped Isa and his mother as gods beside Allah. O Isa son of Maryam, did you say unto men, worship me and my mother as two gods beside Allah? This is a threat and a warning to Christians, chastising them in public. As Qatada and others said, and Qatada mentioned this ayah as evidence. I'm afraid that the praise as ignorant Christians claim is a fabrication made up by AP. Notice also how Ibn Kathir clearly says that this conversation happened in the context where the audience were people who worshipped Jesus and his mother as gods beside Allah which means that the verse is directed at not all Christians, but only to the Christians who did engage in such practice, contrary to what AP claims in the same section of this video. Also, according to the Quran and multiple hadith, Muhammad will intercede for Muslims on the Day of Judgment, so many Muslims around the world ask Muhammad for help in their prayers. Does that mean they worship Muhammad? Same logic. What about the black stone at the corner of the Kaaba? Muslims kiss it, touch it, and give their attention to it during their pilgrimage, because Muhammad did so too, and because Muhammad told Muslims that the black stone will speak on the Day of Judgment and testify for those who paid respect to it. Does this mean that Muslims worship the black stone? Same logic. Uh, around 553 Mark, AP tries to rebut the worship of Mary in Christianity by claiming that the Prophet is allowed to intercede for Muslims on the Day of Judgment, but this should go down in the books as a clear example of non sequitur. Just because the Prophet is allowed to reconcile broken relationships between God and Muslims who have committed heavy sins does not in any way mean that therefore Muslims worship their Prophet and regard him as God. AP's point is true. The Prophet is allowed to personally plead to God that he forgive the sins of Muslims. However, this point does not support AP's conclusion that therefore Muslims worship or believe that the Prophet is God. He also brings up the black stone and that the Muslims kiss it and touch it during the Hajj. Yet in what world would kissing something mean that you believed it to be God? If Muslims prayed to the black stone, asked it for protection, or prayed something like the rosary to the black stone, that would be worship. But merely kissing the stone is not worship, it is a sign of respect to something that the Prophet ﷺ himself did. With all this, we can conclude that all of AP's points have been answered and refuted. AP simply does not understand Muslim theology as evidenced by his confusion on issues such as the relation between God of Islam and the modern Bible. Nor does he understand Christian theology, which can be seen when he claims that the Trinity is not a complicated doctrine. As a matter of fact, his knowledge on history is also lacking as we can see from his oblivion regarding Calyrigianism or how primary sources absolutely are considered forms of historical evidence. However, suffice to say that we have addressed and debunked this objection to Islam. See you all in the next video. Assalamu alaikum. I can't believe this guy actually said that he knows more about Islam than 80% of the Muslims. <laughs>